we're going to look at how digitalization can work for responsible growth. And so we have Elliot Mounier Lompre, uh, CEO of Orange Business Services. Hello, Elliot. Hello, Asha. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here today for the new Orange Business Summit. And so I'm going to start talking about us, but you'll see that it's to better talk about you, because this event is for you. It was designed for you. And so in this room, you all have something uh, in common. You are customers and partners of uh, OBS. Some of you have always been here, and uh, others of you have joined us recently. But I say that if you've chosen us, well, why have you decided to work with us? And I think that there are three main reasons. Three reasons uh, that we bring you strong added value and that are, constitute our unique positioning. First of all, our, the fact that we are an operator and integrator. We master the networks. And we also have increased our capacities in cloud, cybersecurity, and uh, data. And we also provide end-to-end -end solutions. This is based on our expertise. We have more than 10,000 experts in the domain of cloud, data, and cybersecurity. This makes us the third ESN in France. And this represents more than 1 billion euros per year in cloud and data and 1 billion per year for uh, cyber by 2023. This expertise itself is driven by our culture. We care. OBS and our employees support you everywhere in the world. We are present in more than in 220 countries and territories. We are present for you. We are also support you uh, in end-to-end -end solutions. Unfortunately, these past few years, we had a pandemic, the COVID pandemic. Our NPS gained 10 points over this period. There has been a war in Ukraine, which is ongoing. And we supported a number of you during this situation. And our network has always remained uh, functional and is at the moment. And this summer in France, we demonstrated that we were a key player in crisis management. And we currently work with the public sector in, uh, to uh, have a, uh, to combat fi uh, forest fires using AI. All of this makes our relationship uh, very valuable. And this is trust. Gartner analysts say of us that OBS does, says what it does and does what it says. And I think that this is very, uh, this is true. So I'm not here to uh, give you a big uh, business speech and tell you that everything goes perfectly well. I, for those of you who know me, you'll know that it's not uh, a strength of mine. I was a director, uh, of, rather the CEO of Orange Business Services, and I had the pleasure of meeting many of you and supporting many of you in uh, often very complex projects, in migration, uh, in managing crises sometimes. 
And I think that based on this experience, I've gotten to know you, and I think that I understand what your worries are and what of your challenges and what your needs are. And I think that you need to transform your businesses very quickly to become more agile. In this digital world that is going towards uh, cloud and softwares, we are in these uh, technological change that are very complex and that are hard to master end-to-end. Uh, -end. And that the budgets and the costs related to this are are quite high as well. I also know that many of you are perhaps uh, unsatisfied or perhaps frustrated with our capacity to put out uh, fiber optics internet. We are working very hard on this. It is one of our priorities here in France. We've put into place a, a program called uh, fibre, fiber in France, of fiber in businesses, and we are trying to put this out as quickly as possible for our business clients. This is a very uh, ambitious project for the, in 2022, and we are trying to, working very hard to uh, reach this objective. Today, this event that was designed for you will allow you uh, to meet our teams, our experts, you'll listen to talks. I hope that it will allow you to get to know us a bit better and allow us all to think about how we can create a more positive future. Because in the end, that's what it's all about. In a world that is more and more complicated and more and more uncertain, where there are many different crises at the same time, a health crisis, an economy crisis, a geopolitical, geopolitical crisis in Ukraine, in Taiwan, it is important for us to transform and to respond to these crises. We've talked about cyber security, uh, protecting data. We've talked about the, um, the shortage of uh, the scarcity, rather, of the raw materials and also, the climate crisis. All of these things I see as being opportunities, an opportunity for all of us to realize what the, what is going on, to become more responsible as uh, uh, employees and as uh, leaders, responsible leaders, and also an opportunity for us to think of our businesses in different ways, to be able to bring about this positive change. For OBS, this means that we need to become more agile, to become more open on our ecosystem and on our clients, more resilient, and also for us to, be, to use energy more wisely. How are we going to do this? My objective is to transform OBS into a platform that is more modular, more open, more digital, one that can orchestrate connectivity on the cloud with a number of uh, partner solutions and one that can be integrated into your different networks and your different apps, applications. This is, of course, what all modern technologies do. And at the same time, we will improve our integration, our infrastructure integration. I would like OBS to go definitively into the cloud and into the software, into software. Here is one example. Here is an example of Mondelez. It is an agro uh, agricultural giant 
They wanted to optimize their relationship with their client and their communication, and also to uh, improve uh, collaboration between uh, employees. This is quite a classic situation. And so what we did with them in a very large project, we put into place a technology that was based on Microsoft Teams, and we used this technology with a cloud and a contact center. We added data services and artificial intelligence. And we were then able to optimize, optimize and to improve uh, client experience and uh, employee experience. So it is the combination of these technologies, but that they used one service provider, which was OBS. And so this allowed us to have an end-to-end -end solution for the clients and also for the employees. And we were able to quickly to shorten the detection time for uh, situations. And so this is the approach that we are going to try and um, reproduce with you and your clients to help your employees to better to better collaborate and to help you um, move forward in this digital world. Of course, you all have different strategies, pro probably have a multi-cloud, you probably have a very complex organization, you have regulation, uh, regulations to uh, respect as well. And so our goal at Orange Business Services is to help you in all these different dimensions, to support you, to help to help you make the right decisions in a global equation, which also takes into account technology, the environment, uh, finances, of course. This environment that is completely um, tainted by in, uh, uns uh, uncertainty. In these complicated situations, when we're trying to optimize uh, user experiences, there are two pillars, fundamental pi pillars. There's competence and trust. More than ever at OBS, we are going to be focused on humans to develop technologies that are relevant, but to have this focused on the relationships is that we could bring as many people along with us along into this uh, digital uh, transition, to bring the old world towards the new world, to be able to create bridges. And there is a terrain that is absolutely necessary in here, and, and we need to manage uh, talent. Our systems need to create enough engineers to come and work in the, in, in the tech field. We know that we have a large number of people who are unemployed, who have jobs that are very, um, who are not stable. We have a huge problem to address here. A few weeks ago, at the end of August, I went to Brazil to see our team, our Orange business team over there, and at this uh, at this time, I had a chance to go to an uh, to an event that had an impact on me. I met with 30 women who from Brazilian women from uh, uh, difficult neighborhoods, and we trained them full time for them to be able to find work in 
in the digital world. And then we were able to hire some of these women. On the day when they got their, uh, their certificates, the women were, there was a lot of emotion in, in the room. These 31 women are just a drop in the ocean. However, I have this conviction that we can reproduce this situation. We can work with the public authorities to make this happen again because we can create a lot of uh, value in society. And so I'm going to end my speech here. I'm just going to say in conclusion, here at OBS, we are transforming from the inside. We have the objective to better serve you, to help you in your transformation, and to tell you that together we can transform the world. Transforming the world is going towards a world where the digital creates value for everyone and where businesses and responsible businesses will be able to show all of their positive impact. Thank you very much, and I hope you have a great uh, Orange Business Summit. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please stay with us, uh, Alieto. The digital at the service of all. This is the question we are going to try to answer to. How can we put the digital at the service of a responsible growth? We are going to try to answer to this question in a very concrete manner by listening to two different experiences, two companies, one of the great banking group and then uh, a medium-sized company. So now let's welcome the Director General, Deputy in charge of the technological uh, entity at at Crédit Agricole. Hello, Jean-Paul. You have a microphone. Great. So, very well. Bruno Bailly, Jean-Paul Mazaï, welcome to both of you. It's a pleasure to have you on set to share your experience here. I'd like to begin briefly uh, with a short presentation, maybe not Crédit Agricole, we all know you, but maybe a few words uh, on for those uh, who do not know Merem. Merem is a small, medium-sized company, SME. So you, Bruno, took the head a few years ago. You are specialized in electronic uh, uh, circuit boards, and you have 50 employees in three sites, and your ambition is to modernize uh, strongly the company and your tools to change uh, scales and to answer to customers' needs. So today, when we see the needs in terms of uh, IoT that are exploding, four years ago, you uh, implemented a growth plan for Merem, so for the new 4.0 industry. So you are never out of work. Maybe concretely you could tell us about this action plan. Thank you, Asha. Thank you. Hello, everyone. So at Merem, we have started a deep change uh, to have the electronic circuit boards of the future. We were laureate of the France Relance Plan and uh, Innovation Territories in Franche-Comté region. This project consists in generating and supporting this growth uh, for the of the IoT to collect productions from Asia to France, and and we try to support all of the projects on the territory. We started working on massive investments at the scale of Merem that are massive, but we invested 1 million euros in an infrastructure to multiply the service of our, of our facility by three, and we have an investment plan of 3 million euros around five different aspects, production, to have a 4.0 line and develop it, and these are 3D controls and monitoring at all the stages of the production, uh, autonomous robots, automat automated uh, uh, stock management as well, and a another aspect concerns 
information systems, an IT uh, system that is uh, really revisited, completely changed, and, and uh, management of the workshop, the life cycle of the product, products. It's on technology, 5G, and immersive technologies as well. There's an aspect that concerns R&D and collaborative approaches. And finally, the last aspect, the heart of the reactor, the core of the subject, are HR. OBS is supporting you in this transformation, this digitalization. So could you explain how this collaboration took place? So we are working with, we have been working with OBS for a long time, but in, in the last three years, we um, really uh, moved forward and uh, it reviewed all of the architecture of the company and putting at disposal the balancing project. So with the different discussions we've had, they put it at our disposal. This integrates all of the servers with a VDM, dedicated VDM. We have a fiber also in all of our sites. The second aspect concerns 5G. Merem will be the first small company and Orange let us be pioneers in this aspect. So there was a commission for 5G last year. The antennas were supposed to arrive uh, in May, but uh, we will, this will help us fight against hedge computing. We're going to test different use cases. We have five to ten cases that were identified. We're going to test and challenge them at the same time in production for machines that communicate and use AI. You have these autonomous robots that will facilitate the flows and moving in the plant. You have sensors that will be put in place to manage the energy and uh, uh, act on collective efficiency and collecting of data. We have a supervisor that will manage all of the flows with the teams integrating a digital twin of the plant that would also help us uh, use the data that will be used for Merem internally to improve our efficiency, but also to, uh, that is for our users. We have a virtual world now. We use holography systems. We have the a program on customer uh, journey as well, how to improve it with our teams from the first encounter to the last, and so a deployment uh, over a few years with holography. There will be the training of our teams with these new technologies, assistance for maintenance. We will also have quality control. Thank you, Bruno. So the event is called Aliette. So I will be asked Asking you what you answer when you talk about the multiplication, the duplication of all these technologies uh, that consume a lot of energy and raw materials. What would you answer to these? Because this goes against sustainable development. Yes, of course, the digital, everybody knows it represents 3.5% of CO2 emissions on the global level. And even if it's less than the industry or transport, transportation, it is a high figure and it is growing. Then I believe we need to look at the equation globally and take into account the externalities, positive ones that, that come from the digital. My colleague Javier talked about energy of solutions and he co-wrote it, uh, the book called Importance of CO2. We can see that all these positive externalities are important and the net result is very positive. We can think of telework, uh, visio conferences. We can think of everything we're doing with the uh, smart cities, intelligent cities, what we're doing around the industry. We are deploying at Orange Business Services an offer called uh, Smart Eco Energy. So this is for client sites. We have sensors, data, AI that we use uh, that is able to mm, uh, measure the uh, energy consumption. And this, of course, 
mustn't prevent us from working on our own emissions, our CO2 emissions. The new technologies coming on the market are less energy consuming than the former ones and 5G. If you look at carbon, the carbon aspect consumes less than the 4G. It's the case for uh, the fiber compared to copper. We have an improvement by four in terms of energy consumption. And we are working at Orange Business Services on everything that concerns a circular economy. We have, you need to bear in mind that the facilities generate a very high carbon footprint, more than usage. So we really need to think ab about facilities, equipment, recycling, reconditioning. We try at Orange Business Services to collect the routers uh, at the end of the life cycle. We use them, we recondition them or recycle them. And of course, we are working on eco-consumption, eco-design of our products and we try to use sustainable energy. Thank you very much. We are going to continue talking about energy sobriety, reducing the carbon footprint. How do you manage to conciliate your commitments, your uh, SESR obligations, and your growth um, projects, your growth objectives, if there are a specific mean to attain this? Hello, everyone. I would like to start by quoting uh, some but just to show the weight of our organization and its responsibility. Crédit Agricole is today the first private employer in France, the first financer of the French economy, and the first contributor, tax contributor and social contributor. Ah. We can all go home after that. So this is the weight that we have and the responsibility also uh, with all of the French actors to work on this balance between growth, responsibility, profit, and, of course, our collective responsibility. We have three levers at hand to do it. Inclusion, investment, and support. Inclusion means that the Crédit Agricole is a bank for everyone. We do not choose our clients. We have 30 million clients in France, and from the uh, poorest to the richest, sorry to be uh, direct, uh, young, old, we have uh, uh, private individuals and big companies. For all needs, our role is truly to support all of the French people. The so we are here. Whenever you have a bank account, we are present for you. What is a mutual bank? A bank that distributes its results very little. 40% of Crédit Agricole's turnover 40 is set aside. So this means that the result is not an end in itself. It is a means to strengthen uh, private funds and to be more useful. So 80% of the results are set aside. So the profits of Crédit Agricole are put in, stay in the bank, in the territory, and they have a role the different banks can support regions. We have shown this for 130 years now, and I will talk about the Orange Contest. We take part in the uh, transition in the territories in France and the transformation. This is uh, our objective. We support also, as what I wanted to say is that this support in the transition is to support all the economic actors for their transition, whether in energy, in food, short circuits, sobriety, sovereignty, will have a considerable impact on supply chains, up to us to support our clients in this transformation. And this is done with innovation, co-innovation, partnership with startups, with Orange or OBS uh, in certain fields on different topics, whether IoT or our role, once again, is to support this transition. Thank you very much, Jean-Paul. Bruno, what on your side, so you talked about uh, Merem's digitalization. It is uh, 
force now, it's an obligation, but how can you be, remain responsible in your growth? So I think it's an accelerated growth. Yes, we. this is all natural, but there is a true acceleration of our project, and it is important to be careful and uh, uh, stick to the criteria that were defined upstream. We started to, uh, we talked about the cloud, 5G. This is less energy consuming than the former technologies. The immersive, immersive technologies uh, with telework, uh, working from home, uh, go in that direction. Now, when we talk about the industry uh, with electronics and uh, components that are come at 90% from Asia, we discovered this three years ago, but it is it has been the case for 30 years. And now, it will not reverse totally, but uh, we will maybe become a little more autonomous. We will ne need tens, thousands of billions of investments in at least 10 years. So this situation exists. What can we do about it? I talked about R&D. We have an EOS project. It is the implementation of a platform which will work on components obsolescence and the shortage of uh, components. We have been working on it for a year and a half. It will start in f the fall. It aims at calculating, analyzing risk and identifying obsolescence of uh, components to make sure that when we develop the uh, electronic circuit boards, we can identify components that will have a lifespan that is long to uh, ev avoid uh, redoing it every three months. So in, if in, in four months we will have a first version of obsolescence and then another. To make sure that the industry stays in France and we can bring back uh, production in France, we need to work on the innovation ecosystem. For a long time, it was reproached to the French industry to work individually. Today, uh, mindsets are changing, and we are working in a very open system. When we develop a partnership, we always try to see what the added value will be but not only one way. So with OBS, OBS we have flexible energy. We have, for Merem, it's the same for, with immersive technologies. So each spokesperson takes part in writing the scenario and the strategy, and this leads us much further when we are able to provide solutions to all of the industry. So I invite everyone, uh, incubators and uh, projects, to carriers to really work together. There's a lot to do, and we can produce in France. There are a lot of actions in CSR. Also, we can work on photovoltaic panels in plants to reduce temperatures. We can work on reuse also of offices, and there are sensors that we mentioned before to control the energy consumption. This is a global approach that we try to implement. We sometimes hear that the acceleration of digitalization is a, goes against human aspects. So when we talk about responsible growth, Jean-Paul, what do you think? Uh, what is your point of view? We believe uh, on the opposite. If and I'm saying this in a very a little pompous way, but digital must make life more humane. And this up to us to get organized and make sure that we support all of the French people in a human manner to accept the digital. They're not alone. They want the commodity of the digital, but they want to be able to uh, stop a process and talk to a human being. We all were confronted to this situation. You have a digital process, and you are blocked at some point because you don't have the right answer. And uh, we want, at some point, to speak to a person, so a person having the ability to decide and to bring added value. So I believe that our challenge for these activities in B2C is truly, and Orange is confronted to the same topic, how can I mix the digital that is going to take more and more importance, it must upskill, it must help us to do a lot of things, a lot of activities, but we need people. Also, this requires a huge change in our organizations, whether in the 
functioning mode in training of our employees, support that we provide to them, or follow-up steering of the organization. This is a major change. At Créaicole, what we want to do, and if I say it with an image, digital augmented by human beings. So we take the technologies and see what we can do with them and how we can bring more humanity in the relationship we provide. So by speaking of human beings, we cannot talk about this with the, the lack of uh, the shortage of attractivity of uh, uh, people. It's hard to recruit. Bruno, how do you manage things when digital competences and skills are, are very demanded? And we see uh, this in the United States. Uh, people, are, are, people are leaving, young people are leaving. And how does it take place? What happened? The digital transformations and associated technologies are tools, means at the service of a project for men and women and for our planet. So we are going to analyze things in this manner. As an example, we had a soldier, somebody who was, yes, was supposed to leave, and she finally she stayed to train uh, the success people coming after, replace, to replace her. So these people contributed to train other employees. Uh, some activities have changed, some will disappear, and to open up to new uh, positions, and these technologies will help us internally. We decided to onboard everyone with these technologies, not to leave any one alongside the road. So we want to recruit 100 people in the context you described. At the, we're at the border with Switzerland and Besançon, and the salaries are higher. So this is a true objective. Once this is said, what are the solutions? What can we do? How can we start moving and doing things with our project? We uh, went to discuss with schools, and in Angers, we have offices as well. It's the capital of electronics and, and the region, one of the biggest region of France for electronics. We try to have schools come to the plants. Merem represents the métiers, but also all of the activities. It is a question of opening up, listening. I have a lot of l to learn from questions asked by the students rather than what I can teach them. So we really want to open up, uh, talk about what we're doing, but listen to questions to really question ourselves and add depth to the project and really go towards the teams and talk to them as well. We started to have a part-time student uh, who came to come to work in the company. And with the digital, we noticed that, I'm talking about my own case, we try, when we uh, learn how to read and write these with these technologies, we have equations with uh, unknown also. So I see, I saw strong links being established with these young people. They put all of their knowledge at the disposal of uh, uh, former employees. And there was a true exchange between the two. And I was surprised by the added value and what it created inside the company. This is why we are continuing to recruit uh, these uh, part-time student workers, and then it's important to listen. We need to be close to all of the teams. At Merem, we have 60% of women. We, we, this is historical and in all, at all positions in the company. So there's an, when we want to, to go towards the schools, this is we really want to create new uh, call, callings for these young ladies. And uh, I'm talking about society, to make society, m the company more sexy, because uh, it's not that sexy when you think about uh, using uh, uh, components and circuit boards, etc. But we have young people, we're talking about young people who would join us. And we could support them and give them the possibility to also leave the company with a startup company, with a personal project, maybe, and saying, OK, you have been working for three, four years. Now we're going to support you and help you with your own project, not to trap them inside our company and having something that's 
has an, that's dynamic enough to flourish and bloom. So we don't want to trap them in the company. We really want to make sure everything's open for them. We have partners who are interested to take part in our project, and we really want to open it to different kinds of industries. This is a true challenge. It is fascinating, and I spend a lot of my time on it, and I think it's really fantastic. Great. OB, uh, what about OBS, Aliette? Is there a change in the approach, uh, the great lines of your HR strategy? Yes, there's a uh, change in the approach. With all of, As all of our competitors, we see uh, different numbers of employees in India, everywhere, in France. And we see that we need to rethink our HR strategy. We need to rethink our strategy and our uh, uh, value proposition as an employer for our employees and candidates, applicants. We test. We try to innovate. We have launched a lot of different initiatives recently, things that are classical, like a notoriety campaign to make ourselves known, because sometimes business or in services associated to telecom world and uh, the potential applicants are looking for who look for digital uh, companies that do not think of us but we have tried to target per region per city our digital campaigns to show that we have a strong presence on the French territory this was very important we also put forward the fact that at Orange it is important for us to guarantee a certain balance for a personal and professional life and we try to be very creative in our recruitment in the on all aspects for the forum. We launched recently a few weeks ago a campaign that worked, was very successful called WinBack. It started with our teams in India. We filmed the employees and their testimonies. So they had left Orange Business Services and this had decided to come back. So we recorded, uh, we filmed them to, when they explained why they came back and the campaign between became viral. We had a lot of uh, applicants, uh, more than 350. So this, this was very relevant for us and we are gonna renew this in kind of initiative in the future. We are changing the way in which we recruit. So we wanted to find uh, uh, very special people who respond, had the soft skills, the technical skills, everything. More and more now, we are recruiting potential candidates, people we believe will be able to learn during their career, people who know how to manage uncertainties, who know how to work collaboratively. And once we integrate we, these people, we can help them evolve in the company. This is a great challenge, as Bruno says. There's uh, onboarding, but also preparing it. And perhaps uh, people will leave, come back. Jean-Paul, what are you expecting uh, as a partner, OBS, to innovate together at the service of this sustainable growth? We have a very deep uh, uh, relationship with Orange, OBS, Orange Cyber Defense. Our two groups have the same DNA. Very, they're very strongly uh, rooted in the territories. We have an echo in our, of our preoccupations, that is, our concerns, that is great. Our thinking is on the national level. It is very strong locally as well. And we have different common projects on the national level. These are great projects. We talked about fiber before. These types of projects that Crea Ecole is going to finance with Orange. On the local level, I'd like to start by quoting Villages of Innovation of Crea Ecole, which is the first ecosystem. Uh, for startups. Orange is a partner of these villages in France, and we have already 35 or 36 in all of France to ho this host uh, thousands, hundreds of startups. It's a strong collaboration, important for us, important for our partners, and of course for the startups. We also have a local level, on the local level, very concrete things with Orange or OBS. We had, for example, Orange is the partner of Réseau Passerelle with digital inclusions for French people to support them and help them discover the use of the digital. We are working with OBS for the deployment of uh, Visio networks. More and more, our relation with our clients goes through Visio conferences. We deployed it recently, uh, Visio conference tools for LCL. 
we also have actions that are uh, more of a support of our elderly. We did it in 2020 with uh, Apple and Orange to distribute iPads, uh, Wi-Fi repetitors in iPads in old people's homes, retirement homes. And with OBS, we are working on uh, uh, trusting the cloud. We are impatient to see arriving the blue offer because we have a desire for sovereignty that we can offer our clients. These are really topics that we expect a lot from Orange. And we are working for on green IT with Orange. This is important for us as well because we need to be models for Crédit Agrégal, but we are really ha trying to have this support in order to measure and see how we can decrease our the carbon footprint of our IT activities. So a lot of subjects, a lot of topics, we have this very strong relationship with Orange and OBS, and we are capitalizing on this uh, quite tremendously. This is also is a part of the transformation. Aliette, a quick reaction. We have less than 20 seconds left. So to conclude, I'd like to say, I hope that this roundtable showed you that we are sharing these challenges and these objectives for the digital transition. We see very well that our companies have a huge responsibility for the future. There are quite uh, many initiatives for green IT, digital inclusion, developing skills. And I can say that we don't have one meeting uh, in which we don't mention these so topics, and I'm very optimistic for the future. Thank you very much, Aliette. Thank you to all of you. A great thank you for all.